What's on YouTube? It's Pete TT back at it with another division video. And today, guys, I finally get to bring you a weapon review on that elusive Urban MDR. So, as many of you guys know, I've been chasing this weapon since it was implemented in game, and it was a weapon I fell in love with when we heard about it as the blind battle rifle. Now, after several months, I can finally show it off to you guys and bring you my review of it. But guys, before I do, I have to give a massive shout out to Kaylee, as I still wouldn't have one of these bad boys if it wasn't for her dropping me one from her exotic cash when we finished the legendary Times Square. So yeah, Kaylee, thank you very much, sweetheart. I really do appreciate it. Now then, guys, let's get on with the review because this weapon is, in my personal opinion, one of, if not the best weapons in game. And I want to tell you why. So, for those of you that don't know, this is the Urban MDR. It's a single fire assault rifle that has, with my personal firearms, 39.6k base damage, 350 rounds per minute, and 20 in the mag. Now, obviously, guys, these are the base stats and are subject to change depending on your personal stats and the way in which you choose to mod it. So then, as an example, with the mods I attach to the MDR, I can increase my mag capacity to 42 and my RPM to 368. And that's not too bad, to be honest, guys, especially to say that this is, again, a single fire weapon. Now then, let me answer a question for those guys that might be wondering, where do I get an urban MDR? Well guys, you can get an MDR in several different places now. You can of course get it from the survival game mode and the survival caches. And you can get it from the exotic caches. Now, it is worth noting guys that with the implementation of exotic caches, they also introduce the ability to share gear and weapons that are acquired from these caches and the field proficiency caches, etc, etc. So yeah, that's really cool because it means if a teammate gets one and they they already have one like Kaylee did for me then they can now go ahead and drop it for you now then as the 1.6 update changed all named weapons into exotics I think it's also only right we take a quick look at the lure that goes with this weapon before we move on to the really cool bits that make this weapon so goddamn good so the law of the MDR reads if you can find an MDR out here take care of it you're not likely to find a better weapon for dealing with these urban shitbags. Um, that was spoken by Aaron Keener to an unknown former first wave agent. So yeah, there you have it guys. Do with that information what you choose, but a bit of lore to go with your shiny new exotic is never a bad thing. Now then, let's move on to the real reason I'm sure most of you are watching this video, if of course you're still watching, and that's because you probably know about the Urban MDR's unique exotic talent and you want to see what I have to say about it and what recommendations I make to utilize it to its full potential. So guys, the talents I have on my MDR are brutal, destructive and the unique exotic talent distracted now this is a very special talent because it increases your damage by 18 percent against targets with a status effect on them and yes guys this does work in both pve and pvp now then what i want to do here guys is take a look at all the skills that can offer up a status effect because i really do want this to be the absolute best and most detailed weapon review i have ever done to date and that's because i love this weapon so goddamn much and i want to show you guys why i love it so much and how in my opinion you can best utilize this weapon so up first let's look at what i believe is the most obvious skill to use alongside the urban mdr and that is the turret now obviously guys there are two options you can use when it comes to a turret that apply a status effect. We have the zapper turret aka the shock turret and we have the dragon breath turret aka the flame turret. Now personally if you're going to choose this skill then I would hands down go for the fire turret and I would also recommend running the fire quest gear set because this is directly tied to using a flame turret so they kind of both synergize exceptionally well together. Now. These two skills aren't the only two skills that offer up the ability to apply a status effect, so let's look at our next contender, the Sticky Bomb. So when it comes to the Sticky Bomb, again you have two options that can work very well and apply a status effect to enemies, and they are the Flashbang and the Disruptor. Now personally I would always choose the Flashbang over the Disruptor because it gives you some additional crowd control and the Disruptor Sticky doesn't give you. 
And if targets are kind of in cover and they get hit by a flash sticky, then they're going to stand up out of cover, allowing you to deal damage against them, whereas the disruptor sticky won't do this. Now, you can actually improve the effectiveness of this skill too by adding in some performance mods that increase the sticky bomb's blast radius, thus allowing the status effect to be applied to more enemies, and this does work exceptionally nice if in your group there are more people than just yourself running an MDR. Now then, let's move on to our final skill that can apply a status effect directly, and that is the Seeker Mine. Now, if you didn't know guys, all three modifications of the Seeker Mine, so that's Air Burst, Gas Charge, and Cluster, can all apply a status effect. So again, this is a really good choice, and again, similar to the Sticky Bomb, you can increase the area that the status effect is dished out by adding in a few Explosion Raiders performance mods. And that guys kind of wraps up the three main skills that can be used to apply a status effect. Now obviously there are several other ways in which you can apply a status effect to a target and they include things like incendiary, shock, flashbang, EMP and tear gas grenades. And of course you also have the incendiary bullets that can of course add the burn status effect. So overall from a non-gear set approach there are an awful lot of ways to activate the distracted talent on the MDR and increase your damage output. But there are of course several gear sets that can be used to do this too. So the next part of this video we're going to cover gear sets that I would recommend using with the MDR and why. So up first we spoke about it a little bit earlier we have the Firecrest gear set. And why this gear set on its own doesn't actually apply any status effects to targets, it is a very good gear set to run if you want to use the flame turret. That's as we just covered, will apply the burn status effect. So not only will the skill that goes hand in hand with this gear set apply status effect to targets, pocking the distracted talent, you will also get increased damage and range from your fire turret. So yeah, this has to be kind of my top recommendation for use with the Urban MDR. It's very useful in several different situations for PvE and PvP and this is probably going to be like the first build I try and put together with my MDR and then eventually bring you guys a build guide. Next then we have the Predators Mark. Now Predators is one gear set that can work very well with the Urban MDR in both PvE and PvP and that's because not only does it have increased assault rifle damage but it also applies the bleed effect after landing 10 shots on your target. Now again we covered it earlier but to clarify to those who may not know, bleed is a status effect. So combine the fact that every 10 shots you can guarantee yourself a bleed effect, you also increase the weapon damage because of the set bonus that gives you extra assault rifle damage so again guys a very good gear set to run with this weapon now I haven't actually checked this out I know in the 1.5 version of the game predators was like one of the best sets to use with the MDR because of that bleed effect with the way armor has been changed and we now have maximum health and things like that I don't actually know if it's as effective in 1.6 as it was in 1.5 because obviously our time to kill is a little bit better now things like last stand we have normalized gear you know the dark zone PVE things like that so again it's gonna take a lot of testing but I do still recommend this gear set Right then, moving on, we have a Sentry set, and again, Sentries is a very good gear set that may not on its own apply a status effect that I'm aware of, unless of course the Sentry stacks actually count as a status effect, but if I'm honest guys, I'm not sure of it, and again, I would need to test it, but it can be a very powerful set to run in combination with the MDR because it's a single fire assault rifle, so landing those headshots is a lot easier, thus giving you and your team a lot more damage. Now, this is actually going to be a build I try to put together tonight. Um, not because I don't want to build the Firecrest first, like I said I was going to, but because I actually have all the Sentry pieces there. I think I have about 30 pieces of Sentry's gear, whereas I only have about 5 of the Firecrest and three of them are gloves, so I actually, you know, I need to carry on building my Firecrest setup before I can actually make the build, so yeah, I'm going to give Sentries a go tonight, and quite possibly, you know, put a live build together on Twitch, so if you're watching this today, make sure to come and check us out, twitch.tv forward slash p3t3tt tonight, because it should be pretty interesting. Now, obviously, guys, you can, of course, run any gear set you wish with this weapon, but I do highly recommend one of the three that we just covered because they are, in my opinion, the best options to use so that you can maximize your damage output. Now, you might be thinking I missed the whole high-end build, okay? 
High-end builds can be very, very, very good, okay? Especially if you're using the uh, Skulls MC gloves because they also increase your damage output. Um, but again, you know what? I need to do a lot of testing, guys. It's taken me so long to get my hands on an Urban MDR. I literally have like six videos I want to do all surrounding builds on the Urban MDR and different ways to utilize it and play with it. So definitely stay tuned for it. Now then, let's move on and show you guys how I would recommend specking this weapon in terms of weapon modifications, right? Because that is very important and can be very key to making the most of the damage. So, up first then, what are we going to do? We'll look at the scope first, okay? Here, I would recommend getting as high as possible headshot damage. Above the 16% mark would be good. I think like 18, 18.5% is the max. You definitely want to try and get crit hit chance on that and crit hit damage. On the muzzle then, I recommend an Omega Rifle Suppressor with Headshot Damage, Crit Hit Chance, and Crit Hit Damage. On the barrel, I would say Crit Hit Damage, possibly a very good one. Reload Speed and Accuracy. Now, Reload Speed is one of them. If you're happy with the Reload Speed of the weapon, personally, I would say maybe swap out for Stability or something. But, you know, it is one of them. The underbarrel can kind of come down to how you like to play and what kind of mods you want on it reload speed yes it, it's good it fake increases your on-screen dps if you at all care about that but it doesn't actually really help with your damage and you know with 40 odd rounds in a mag single fire you don't actually need to reload that often so it's not like the major must have stat on one of the mods but yeah do with that as you would guys uh, finally on the magazine i would go for mag size crit chance and rate of fire now, the reason I'm suggesting a setup like this, guys, is because the MDR, as we've said enough times now, it's a single-fire weapon, so specking hard into headshot damage and having good crit chance and crit damage is really going to help you on the whole damage front. Now, whether you're actually playing in PvE or PvP, there will be a noticeable difference in your damage if you spec this way and you can land your headshots. Now, personally, guys, I've also got Brutal on mine so that again increases my headshot damage so yeah you know th this is just one of them weapons it can cater to various different play styles um, I think you just kind of need to find your play style and then adapt how you mod the weapon and how you play depending on what gear set you're running depending you know if you run as a team what your actual team role is and things like that but you know bottom line guys this weapon is absolutely fantastic I played with it um, on the PTS. I fell in love with it. I've seen so many people playing with it through 1.5. I was like, this is the weapon I need, okay? I love single fire weapons. In most games, it allows you to be very accurate. They normally have increased damage than you know their counterparts being fully auto, i.e. in this game, the Lightweight M4, the LVOA, the G36, things like that. And I think with the base damage increase we the Urban MDR got in 1.6, I definitely think it's up there now. And uh, it can be very, very, very powerful, again, for PvE and PvP. Now, then, guys, that is about going to wrap up this video. Hopefully, you guys have kind of got a good feel about this weapon as much as I do and kind of understand why I love it so much. Hopefully, again, I answered all your questions. But, guys, if I didn't and you still have a question, make sure to hit me up in the comment section down below. And I will do my very best to answer them. Now, again, I said it earlier, we're going to be live on Twitch tonight playing some Division, rocking through some Legendary modes and possibly some Last Stand. I'm going to try a Century MDR build. So, come and check that out. See how it is going to go, guys. If you're new to the channel, smash that subscribe button. There are plenty more Division videos coming your way. Don't forget to drop a like on the video, guys, if you liked it. That is always appreciated and very helpful of me. And as always, agents, thank you very much for watching. Until the next video, I'll catch you all soon.